Twisted aliens and demented cultists battle across the devastating science fiction world of Dark Age. Muster your forces and learn to survive at beastsofwar.com. Greek mythology rages to life in mythic battles pantheon. Become a god and command heroes and monsters in a battle for Olympus at beastsofwar.com. Hi everybody, welcome back to What's in the Box. Today myself and John are having a look at something a little bit different. So, we're having a look at the Shield Maidens from Shield Wolf Miniatures. Yep. These, I believe, were actually kickstarted, mm -hmm. and they are now available for you guys to pick up. You can go to their web store, uh, www.shieldwolfminiatures.com, mm -hmm. and you can grab these, and I would definitely recommend them. Because yeah. I've, if you were watching our, our Legends of Field Realms beta weekend, you'll have seen that I was having a play with these. Mm -hmm. I love this kit. It goes together really well, and again, plastic. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, John, uh, let's have a, a quick gander at the box under the camera, because the artwork on the front is quite simply gorgeous. It's very heroic. And it's it exactly what you expect for a piece of fantasy art. Mm. Well, I mean, like, it's, it's got that, that almost comic book feel to it. Yeah. And like you said, this is not real world shield maidens. I'm going to put that out there right now. This is fantasy, fantasy shield maidens. Yeah, you can take a bit of artistic license when you have uh, fantasy anything. Exactly. So, I mean, like the, the shields, the weapons, the, the armor. It's all know. off scale or different design to be more yeah. in keeping with a fantasy aesthetic. Yes. So. Yes. And on the back you've got some beautiful sketch work done. Yeah. So Let's see if I can get that. There you go. Yeah. I do particularly like the Shield Maiden with the, the big spiked mace. <laughs> I think that just sums up what I expect a Shield Maiden to do. I am pissed off and I am going to lump you. Yeah, absolutely. Shall we look at some sprues? Uh, yes. No, I, I will admit I already have had a play with these, so we only have two complete sprues left. But he was kind enough to leave us complete sprues. Yes. Uh, you can build 20 uh, miniatures from this, and mm -hmm. they are 28 mil scale. So, uh, this is a range that you can basically fold into if you like playing your saga, you want to do something a little more fantasy out yep. there, or any of the other sort of fantasy Dark Ages games. Yeah. Uh, like I said, me personally, I think they're perfect for Fabled Realms. Absolutely. In um, fact, I was actually talking to Ben from Foreground. He's actually super excited about these. So, uh, guys at uh, Shield Wolf, if you're watching this, do not be surprised if Big Ben from Foreground gets onto you saying, "Oh, we, we we would really love to, you know, put these into the Fabled Realms as a faction." Let's talk. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Which many conversations with Ben start and never end. <laughs> the the man is. Bit, a bit scattershot on the conversation, as I'm sure all of our attendees probably noticed, but <laughs> always very interesting stuff that he's Absolutely. talking about. To the miniatures. Yes, to the minis. So, so get me you get your, your sprues, you got two types of sprues in here, yeah. I believe. So this is one that looks like it's more of like a command, sort of leader-esque sprue. Yeah, I well, think. I mean, like, you've got the, the components to build the leader, so I would assume these components right here would be for your leader. So you've got that big fur cloak, big that heavy shield. Big sword. Yeah, let's actually get a look closer on that. Yeah, so that, that sword. That sword is immense. Yeah, and very fantasy-esque. You've yep. got that really nice feeling. Mm -hmm. You move on across the sprue, you've got your, your big banner and stuff, mm -hmm. and a war horn. Uh, move to your shields. Uh, you've then got your body types there as well, and mm -hmm. the different backs. So you can do these caped or uncaped, which right. is a nice choice. I also like the fact that they've done one thing that I hate in some miniatures is uh, they do the the army man base already molded onto them. These yeah. do not have that. Yeah, I prefer not having the little tab underneath. Yeah, I think a lot it just models. it makes it a little easier for any conversions, diorama work you want to do. Imagine doing a full diorama of this with them assaulting like a a fort or a castle or something. Yeah. Tell me how amazing that would be, look. Be very, very aesthetically pleasing. Yes. Other sprue. Yes. So this one is what it's more the the standard infantry uh, part of the, yes. the kit. Yes. Now it's all of it is quite heroic. Now you've got a couple of hooded heads there. Yeah. Some more of the the bodies and stuff. And again, like I said, you've got that option to put them with capes or no capes. And if uh, if I'm right, this is all the hair. Yeah. And the the heads. Now. This is the, the one gripe I have with the kit. The one gripe, and it's an aesthetic thing. Yeah. Some of the hair is swept, like, straight up. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't really imagine how that would work in real life. I'm, I'm sure it probably does happen, but to actually choose that as the moment to capture the snapshot of the, the, the warrior, the pose of the miniature, yeah. feels a little odd to me. Also, whenever I built my stuff, I actually did put a couple of those in just to try it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it just it feels a little off to have everybody else's hair flowing in like in sort of a flat direction and yeah, then just suddenly a couple that are going yeah. up. I mean it's it it's not out of the realms of possibility. Like if you're they're they're clearly mm -hmm. 
like Norse-esque sort of yes. idea. So they're northern people. So when you yes. say north, you think cold, you think blizzards, gales, stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. that's where they're probably getting the, the hair idea from. Yes, and there are more than enough different styles of head and stuff in there that you don't have to use them if you don't want. Yeah. So, you know, if this was a, a kit that only had... Uh, right, so you're making 20 people and you only have 20 heads to go with it, Yeah. that would be a gripe for me, but this actually has a good mixture of everything, yeah. which I think is absolutely perfect. So well done, guys, at Shade Wolf. Yeah. Honestly, I think, from like, in my own opinion, mm. I think these are probably some of the, the finer female models that are out in the market for Wargaming. Yes, yes. Um, because everything is well-proportioned. Yes. Everything is, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this because I think it's an important point that we should mm. say, I think it's respectfully done. Yes, this is, is okay. Now, okay. Anytime you do a, a fantasy female, you are walking into landmines, depending on what direction you go artistically. Yeah, yeah. these I would say are perfect, mm -hmm. absolutely perfect because nothing's overdone. They look really heroic. They yeah. have, I mean, like even if whenever you look at the arms and stuff, you can see good heavy duty muscle on there. Yeah. So these look realistic in the fact that if you're a, a warrior, you're gonna have you know, well-toned, hardened muscles. Yeah, they're they're not just women, these are soldiers. Yes. And they, when you look at the sprues and the parts, they yes. they feel and look like soldiers. Mm -hmm. You know, these are people that fight, they're not about everything yeah. else. Yeah, if, if Shield World forever to revisit this kind of thing, and I wish they do, Yeah. I would love them to see like a Valkyrie set. So like yes. heavy plate and stuff, big winged helmets, yes. you know, that I think could be gorgeous on the tabletop. But I think there, there's a lot to explore. I mean, yeah. I, I personally, when we were talking about the Field of Realm stuff, mm. I'm I'm looking for uh, a female knight. Mm. You know, I'm looking for female knights. You know, yes. to have a bit more infantry. Yeah. But I I love, uh, to an extent, I love the the female aesthetic of having mm. warrior woman. There's something yes. that's really interesting about women that took to battle. Yeah. You know, in in real life as yeah, well as history. as in. You know, in history as well as in uh, fiction, mm -hmm. you f you see a good solid female character in a book or something, yeah. and you go, you immediately fall in love with that person because they are strong, they are tough, they are yes. like resilient. They they stand up alongside mm -hmm. the men just as tough as anybody else does. Yeah, well, if you if you even watch something like the Vikings TV series, yeah. Lagatha in that series is absolutely brutal, incredibly ruthless, and just, you know, has that true badass attitude, which is amazing to me. Yeah. Now, uh, we're not going to take a break this time. I've actually got these built off camera, so... Yeah, because, uh, again, if you've watched the Fable Realms beta weekend stuff, yeah. you'll already have seen, potentially have seen these. So. Yeah, and I, I did base these on some foreground bases, just so that they would fit within what I was wanting to do. So, yeah. uh, and I've built quite the spread. So the first thing I'd like to show off is the crossbow women. Mm-hmm. And these are really nicely done because you have everything you need. So crossbows, you can have it up and at the ready or down and, you know, just out the way. You've also got all the little uh, quivers that mm -hmm. you can put on around the back if you spin them around. Yeah. And you see what I mean about that that muscle definition? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a very strong female pose that mm -hmm. they've done with this. Uh, I've also done a couple of sword and shield ladies. Okay, let's move these two away. And I really like these two. Yeah. I love the, the pose. They are ready for battle. Mm -hmm. And then I did, uh, well, for my particular warband, I did the twins. And the, these the are the twins. two that I put. Yes, because I, I armed them the same. And basically, I liked writing a bit of backstory. So I imagine these are two sisters mm -hmm. armed the same, you know, and they're, they're very much interconnected within the backstory of the warband as I would write it whenever yeah. I get right to it. So the, these would be two two characters that would, yes, because they're sisters, because they fight together, they would like, you know, that typical fiction thing where it's mm -hmm. these two have fought so long together, they can just tell what each other is going to do, and exactly. they almost act as as one yeah. thing that, rather than two individuals. It's actually quite hilarious on the tabletop because they were actually doing that in game. Really? Yeah, <laughs> and I, I love whenever you you imagine that kind of a backstory mm -hmm. for a pair of characters. And then it actually really starts to play out because you'll subconsciously try and play them like that. Yeah. Um. Whenever it works, oh, it just feels so good. The last one I did was the leader. Mhm. Mm and the leader, I wanted something a bit more heroic, so she has a cape. Yeah. She's obviously carrying the banner. You know, mm -hmm. the standard must be brought forward, and a large two-handed sword because why the hell not stab someone with a bigger bit of steel? Exactly. And she looks exactly like a, a leader character should look I think yeah the cape does it though because yeah there's a lot of capes in the kit mm. but you've only chosen this one person to have it and yes. that's 
immediately what makes you think this person's more important. Yeah. Not just the banner. The banner helps. Yeah. But that cape, that big flowy cape. Yeah. And it's nice that you actually picked a head with the hair that goes in the same direction as the cape, so it has yes a bit more of that sort of feel to it. Yeah. This this is something that I always talk to people about whenever uh, whenever companies are in and they're talking about building new kits and designing new kits. Yeah. I always say to them there are two real options that you have. You can either go single pose, yep. really beautiful and dynamic, or you can start to go a bit more modular. When you go modular, you're going to lose some of that uh, dynamism, yep. but I think in this particular kit, the actual way they've designed the joints, so the, the actual connection at the shoulder is a bit of a ball joint, so you have a, a bit of play to raise a shield, lower it, hold yep. it at the ready, you know, have a sore back ready to swing, or get a banner out in front if you, you know, mm -hmm. plant it well in the ground. Now, if you have a close look at the, the two heroes with the leader, you'll actually see what I mean about the, the upward swept hair. Yeah, you can see that that sort of breaks away from it a little bit, but again, you do not have to use that. And I think, yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to pick up another box of these for my my own personal stuff. Yeah, definitely. Right, I think the only thing really left to do is pass this out to everybody in the community, ask them what they think of the kit. Have you picked them up yourselves? Have you maybe done some conversions to them? Because that I would love to see. Yeah. Just if anybody has been playing about with them, because uh, whenever we were doing the beta weekend, we had uh, converted forces being brought in. And I did these essentially as uh, an immigrant force, so I'm immigrating a range into the game, which mm -hmm. I thought was really cool. Definitely one to pick up, definitely one to look at. Yeah. Uh, everybody, get your comments in below, we'll move on, we'll see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe, and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.